Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing part two of the floor remodel for this room. This room is going to be our jungle room. So the walls have been painted green. The ceiling has also been painted green. And then uh, in the last video, I took out the carpet that was in here. So right now it's just the OSB board that is down. And then today I am going to be putting down the new hardwood laminate flooring. Uh, the link for the previous video will be down in the description. You can see how I took out the carpet and any of the steps that I took up leading to now. Today, all I did was just swept the floor again to make sure it was nice and clean before I lay down the new flooring because it will never be able to be clean, uh, cleaned again unless you take out the floor again. We just got back from the store not too long ago. Uh, picked up everything that I needed, which was the new laminate flooring. I picked up some quarter round strips to put against the wall after I put the flooring in, the adhesive for the uh, quarter round strips, the foam underlayment to go under the laminate flooring, and a saw that I'll be using to cut the laminate boards. The first step that I'm going to be doing is putting on the foam underlayment, and I'm just going to lay that down and use a staple gun to hold it in place. Okay, so when you get to this side, the foam has a little sticky strip on there. So I'm going to match it up with this edge to this edge. And then I'll remove the little strip at the end and attach them together. Alright, so I just finished laying all the foam down. I have it completely covered along the entire floor. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to remove these little corner pieces so that I can put them on top of the laminate flooring once I lay that down so that it'll cover up any gaps or anything that are there. Um, I'm going to attempt to take these off without damaging them too much. So I'm going to use this towel and these channel locks and I'm going to try and just pull them off because I believe they're just either stapled, glued, or both. And hopefully they don't pose much of a challenge to get off. But we will see, I guess. I'm just gonna grab it, and yeah, they're not that difficult. And that's it, they just pop it off, so they just have these staples in there. Um, I have that one over there, that one, and that one. So there's only three of them left, and then I'll start to put the flooring down. So the, the flooring that we're gonna be using is this hard scraped Saratoga Hickory laminate flooring made by Traffic Master. I wanna say it was between 80 and 90 cents a square foot. And we just went with this one because it was a nice dark color like we liked. So you can see. So nice and dark, this is gonna go 
well with the green walls. And it has like a nice tissue feel to it. All right, so the first step is we're gonna put it as tight to the wall as we can. The tighter you can keep it throughout the whole process, the better it will be at the end, because you don't want to have too much slack on either side. You want it to try to fit as flush against all sides of the wall as possible. So I have the first one down, push it up against the front wall and the back wall, and then the laminate flooring just kind of snaps into each other. So we put the second one as tight as possible. And then the seam is right here. So the next piece you're gonna wanna cut a little piece off so that the seams don't all line up because if they all line up then they'll just lift up where the seams connect. So you want to make sure the seams are staggered throughout the entire floor. And then on this back row edge there's a little bit of a gap where the other snap lock is but we're going to be putting down a quarter inch molding around the entire uh, floor so you'll be able to see this gap and it'll also hide this paint line that's right there, so we don't have to worry about any of that. Now over here where the closet meets the actual bedroom, there's a little piece that sticks out and it doesn't fit perfectly, so now we're going to have to take this and measure it all out and then cut it so that it fits evenly against the wall and then uh, cut like a little small piece that will fit right in there and then after that first whole row is down I can go through and lay pretty much a good five foot before I come up to this next edge that I'll have to start cutting again. But that's the, pretty much the process. You just want to get the first row started. Make sure you keep everything tight and get your measurements good. And then pretty much is fairly simple from there. Just keep your seams staggered and make sure everything is nice and tight. All right, so I got this piece right here that I need to cut uh, so that it meets up with the edge of the closet right there. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to measure the distance out to the next piece. So it's going to be thirty-two and seven eighths. So I'm just going to measure that, write it on the back, 32 and 7 eighths for that, and then it's going to come out about 3 and 1 quarter inches. twice, cut once, and then the distance in again, just going to have to eyeball it a little, and go with six inches. So the next step is I'm going to measure it out and mark everything down with my square so that it will be nice and even. So we have 32 and 7 eighths for the long edge. Come down here, put a mark 
at 32 and 7 eighths. And then I'll take my square, put it on the mark, and line. Okay, so I the next measurement we had was three and one quarter. So that's how far in the cut needs to go. So I'll put a line right there. And I'll make a second one over here so I can line them up. Hold the square right there. So now we have that line. And then it needed to be six inches. So I will put tape measure on the line there. Make it work at six inches. We're back on that mark. And now we have the little area that we need to cut out. It's gonna fit right around that. All right, so I got everything cut and I have the piece now in there. As you can see, it fits all the way around and fits flush up against all the sides of the wall. And part is this little gap right there. It's a little hard to cut that angle with the saw. But once I put these back in there, you won't even be able to tell that that's right there. So it doesn't make a big difference. All right, so for over here, I'm just gonna take that piece that I just cut, and I'm gonna put that as the starting piece. So now, put this in the seam will be over here, and then it'll be even more off once we get down to the other side. And then having to cut the difference off on the end, we'll continue to keep the seam staggered out. So the way it goes in is it just clips right in to the next piece. And just make sure you have it pretty tight. Put it in, and then it just sticks right there. And that's it. So I forgot originally that you want to leave about an eighth to a quarter inch gap all the way around to compensate for the material expanding, contracting, whether it's from the humidity or heat, cold. So this one, each side just leaves like a little tiny crack all the way around. So this way, if it does expand, it doesn't like buckle up and raise up uh, along the seams. All right, I'm about maybe halfway done now. I have that area over there to do. And then the doorway area, um, I'm almost at the next edge for the closet. And then I will be on to the fun stuff, cutting all the angles to lead up to the doorway. So this piece was really not fun to cut. Um, but now I'm on to the angle portion. One reason that one wasn't very fun is because that's straight and then that's a different angle. And then that was another angle. But now, these are all the same angle all the way down. They're just a tad bit more finicky to get in because when you lift it up, it's hitting the wall right there. But they're all the same angle and the way I found out what the angle was is just measured from here to here, which was like nine inches 
and then I measure it from here to here, which is like, I think 15 and 7 eighths or 16 inches or something, and then take the speed square and pivot it until the line matches up and you can figure out what the angle is. And I'll show a little video when I go to cut the next piece on how to use this speed square to figure out what the angle is. And then you can set your miter saw to the appropriate angle and just cut them. So the way you can figure out the angle, you're gonna measure your short side first and mine comes out to this mark right here, which is 31 and 7 eighths. And then you measure your long side and that one is right there. And it came out to, uh, I believe it was 36 and 3 quarters. Yeah. Some marks right there. So 36 and 3 quarters. And after you have your two measurements, you want to line it up where it says pivot on the mark. And then you're going to rotate it around until you line it up with the other mark. And then you can come right here and see that it says right there, 45. So that means you're going to have a 45 degree angle over here on this side. Once you cut it, that angle will be a 45 degree angle. Now this is already at 45 degree angle. So if you want to, after you figure it out, you can just put it on this way and that's already 45 degrees. So you don't have to pivot it around every time. And then, once you're done, you can come over here to the saw. It says 45 degrees right there. And there's also 45 on that side. Uh, depending on which way you need to cut it. So you just swing it around, line it up, and then tighten it down. And then you're all set to start cutting 45 degree angles. I got so lucky on this edge. The last board fits perfectly. So I don't have to rip it, which means cutting it lengthwise, which I don't have the most practical saw to do it with, so it would have been fun. Uh, but yeah, I got really lucky and it fits perfectly right there. All right, so I've finished the entire floor. And the next step is to put this little T strip in. So there's a metal piece that is right there. I have to cut it, but it'll fit into this like a channel and you screw the metal channel down here and then this will pop into it and it will cover up all of this right here. But before I did that, I guess I could have cut the carpet a little bit more straight, but before I did that, I had to remove about an inch of the foam that's under the carpet and cut off the tack strips right here and right over here and then i'm going to go through and staple the carpet down to the floor and then i'll put in the channel all right so i have that metal channel installed right here and then this is just going to sit right on top of it like that Alright, mm, I'm just saying, I'm that thing is uh, a lot harder to put in than I thought. You really have to beat that in there. It's very tight. But that was the last step for the actual floor. Now I have to go and put the quarter round all the way around and then put those little corner pieces on, and that'll be it. 
All right, so last night I ran into a bit of a dilemma. The adhesive wasn't really sticking. It uh, would stick in certain spots and it would pop off in other places. So uh, I gave it a few tries in a few different places and yeah, it just wasn't working. So this morning I just went to Home Depot and picked up some nails and a nail setter and I'm just gonna use nails to apply it and then I'll just cover up the nail holes with some, with this like, uh, it's over there somewhere. It's like this little putty sealing compound that kind of matches the color of the wood so that you won't really be able to see the nail holes. So this is what I'm talking about right here. As you can see, it really wasn't sticking. I kept pushing it and it would just keep popping off. I held it for like five minutes and it's still in certain spots that just kept popping up off the wall. This side kind of held a little bit better, but still right there is a big gap. So I'm just gonna go through with nails and do it that way. So these nails, they are the smooth shank one inch finishing nails. And I'm just gonna place them probably about every 12 or so inches and just make sure you get it going into the wall. So just tack it on a little bit. Once you get it close, then you're just taking a little nail setter, put it right there. And then leaves that little spot right there. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna grab the ceiling compound. So I just have this wood laminate vinyl putty for dark brown surfaces. And just gonna put a little dab right there. Wipe over with my finger. And there. Now you can't see where the nail was. Turned out pretty good. All right, so I just finished uh, covering up all the little nail holes that I put in the trim when I was attaching the trim to the wall. And I am now completely done with the floor. I wanna say it took me probably six hours total to finish the whole thing. Um, and here's what the finished product looks like. So there we have it. Floor completely done. Have all the quarter round down. All the floor panels are down. All those little things in the corner right there. Got all those back and attached. And the only final thing that I have left to do is just to do a little touch up paint. Right, hit the wall a little bit, put in the panels in, and to touch up the paint around those things where I peel them off the wall. But other than that, the floor is completely done. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I have plenty more stuff around the house that I'm going to be doing. And I hope to see you guys again soon.